What's up creatives, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel. And if we're just meeting in this channel, I do a lot of tutorials for video and photo editing. So if you're interested in those topics, consider subscribing or just stick around, see if you like it. And maybe at the end, yeah, you can give a like and subscribe. But today's video is gonna be a very requested one throughout my history on YouTube, in my other channel and in this one, is how to correct and color grade log footage. Now, log footage, if you're not familiar with it, it's a gamma curve, it's a way your camera records video to achieve a better or the most dynamic range your sensor can uh, can handle. So basically it's trying to mimic the dynamic range of cinema cameras by achieving a lot of information. How does it do it? By bringing down the highlights, bringing down the whites, so we have more information in the highlights and we don't have anything overexposed, and by bringing up the blacks and the shadows, so we have more information in the shadows, nothing underexposed, and as a result, we have a very flat image with nothing of contrast, with nothing of saturation, and it looks quite dreadful. So. How to correct it? It's a very simple process. First of all, we need to correct the exposure and the contrast, bring it back. Then we want to correct the white balancing. And finally, we want to correct the skin tones. Now, it's a very simple process and I use this process for every flat picture profile that I have. For example, this scene that we're seeing right here is being shot with Cine 2, which is another flat picture profile. It doesn't have quite the dynamic range as s -Log, but it's a very nice image. Now, I have to say, just a little parenthesis, that normally I shoot with my 35 uh, 1.4 from Sony, that's why the angle is quite different. Now I'm shooting with the Tamron 17 to 28, and it's basically because when I was recording the Spanish version of this video, I dropped it, and yeah, the autofocus doesn't work. So I have to go and take it to Sony, let's see if they can repair it, and also, yeah, it, it's not working properly it's a very sad day okay guys so once in your editing program here we have premiere pro is the one i use and here we have this image of myself just making a tutorial and as we can see this image is completely flat we have no contrast we have no saturation and it looks like garbage so what we're gonna do is create a simple process that you can apply in any editing program and to any footage from any brand for example for canon c log for nikon v log for sony uh, S-Log or any flat picture profile, whether it be cine gamut or S-Logs or log footage, you can apply the simple process to correct your flat picture profiles or flat image and you will achieve great results. So it's going to be a very standard process that anyone can use. So we're going to jump into the color grading part within Premiere Pro over here. Can select it and over here we can see that Lumetri color has appeared and basically we, here we can alter all the color grading and uh, image and then we're going to use the Lumetri scopes as a base. Now, Lumetri Scopes, if you can't see it, you can go over the window and select Lumetri Scopes over here, select it. And we're gonna use three of them to correct our image. First of all, we're gonna use this one, which is called the Waveform from Luma. Then we're gonna use the Parade from RGB. And then we're also gonna use the Vector Scope YUV over here. So we're gonna use all these three. So we're gonna use the three of them as a basis to know when we're correcting our image correctly. So each of them is dedicated to certain parts of color grading, for example the Luma for the contrast and exposure, then the RGBs for the white balancing, and then finally the vectorscope for the color grading part for the skin tones in particular. So let's start off by correcting the contrast as our first step. Okay, so here we have the Luma waveform over here, and what it is, is a graphic representation of the image that we're seeing over here. So if we click play, we can see that it moves just like the exposure on this image. You can see that the center, this thing that is moving, is my face, and we're a bit higher up just because it's a bit more exposed than the rest of the image. Now at zero, we have the blacks, and at 100, we have the whites. Now, what we want to do is return that contrast to the image. For an image to be correctly contrasted, we need to have pure blacks on our image, and pure white. So first of all, what we're gonna do is go to the basic corrections and we're gonna add some blacks. Now, if we add blacks, we can see how the Luma waveform starts to alter and it's being pulled down as blacks start to appear. Now, you have to remember that blacks and shadows are different just as highlights and whites are different. Highlight, whites control the brightest parts of our image, blacks, the darkest parts of our image. And in the middle is the highlights and the shadows. So they don't move the same values. So you have to remember that and keep it in mind every single time you move these sliders. So blacks, we're gonna move them down until something in the image, which I know is pure black in the scene, like the shadow over here, touches the zero indicating that it is a pure black. We don't want it to go all the way down. Otherwise we have this contrast, which isn't very real and strange artifacts start to appear. So we want to pull it up just a bit until something touches the blacks. Just like that, yeah, something like that. Now, we're gonna pull up a bit of the whites. Now, the whites in this image, we don't have any pure whites. If we had the LED lights that we have over here and selected, 
these are pure whites on our image and would be at the 100%. Now in this case, we don't have any lights in the frame, so we're not gonna move the whites all the way up to the 100. We're just gonna move them up accordingly and, and you have to be very reasonable with what you're doing. So I'm just gonna pull it up just a bit, ever so slightly, yeah. Then the shadows, I'm gonna pull them down to achieve more contrast. Notice how the Luma waveform starts to move depending on what we move. So we're gonna pull them down the shadows so we have that nice contrast over here. Yeah, now it's looking more contrasty. And then if we move the highlights, we can see that most of the image is moving basically because everything in this image or most parts of the image are considered to be in the highlights because it was shot at the day or at midday. So in this case, I'm just gonna pull the highlights up just to bring back a little bit of light into my face, something like that. And then I'm just gonna pull a bit of the shadows just a bit down ever so slightly just to have a very nice and natural contrast. Now, when you've gone too far with an edit, you can see it, for example, if we pull the whites all the way up, here we have some clipping and now we can see that we don't have any information over here. So that's an indicator that you've gone too far with the slider. Now, opposite to that, if we go to the blacks to the minus 100, we can see those uh, clipping in the shadows and we're losing some information. That's when you've gone too far in the shadows and in the black. So I'm just gonna return it. And now we have that very nice contrast. We can see the before and after. This is how the image was. And this is how the image is now. Now there's another thing that we have to change, which is the saturation. Now, flat picture profiles, well, they are flat in the highlights, in the shadows, but also in the saturation. So we're gonna return some saturation. In this case, I had the S-Log on my camera, basically at default. So I'm just gonna add the saturation back. I'm just gonna add maybe a 145%. And now we have some color. Now it's looking a lot more natural, but it looks like I have jaundice. And that's because I have the white balancing wrong and just the nature of the S-Log on the Sony cameras, the 8-bit cameras. So the first step is done. We've basically returned the contrast and the saturation and exposed correctly our S-Log footage. Now, next up, the white balancing. Now for white balancing, what we're gonna use is the RGB parade over here. We're gonna deselect the waveform. And what we have over here is a very similar graphic that we had in the Luma Waveform, but now we have it divided in three channels. Now these three channels, the RGB compose every single pixel on our image. Now digital images or screen images or anything that we see on screen is all composed from red, green, and blue and the combination of them to create the exposure that we're seeing. Now white balancing is very important for video and I highly recommend you to nail it down on field and nail it down manually. And the way to do it, a very simple and casual way to do it, it just pull up a sheet of paper or a white shirt or anything on field and adjust the Kelvin so you have a neutral white in your image. Now, if your image or your sheet of paper is yellow or blue, it's because the white balancing is wrong and you need to adjust it. Now, having said that, I normally use auto white balancing and that's why my images sometimes suck and I have to correct it in post edition. So how to correct it? We have these three uh, parades over here, the RGBs. And as we can see over here, we have the red over the green and the blues. That's indicating that our image isn't correctly white balanced. What we want to achieve is that these three waveforms to be at the same level, and that will indicate a correct balancing of the colors or our image, a neutral color. So what we want to do to alterate these three and to make them even or uh, parallel in the waveform over here is move the temperature and tint. So if we see the reds up, that's indicating that we have too much temperature. So what we want to do is pull down the temperature towards the blues. And as you can see, it starts going down and the blues start going up. So when to stop, we have to stop when they are in a similar level. So over here, they're in a similar level. I'm gonna stop, we have a bit too much blue over here. It's a bit too high. Just correct it just a bit. Yeah, something like that. So the red channel and the blue channel are corrected, are balanced. Now the greens, we can see that they are a bit down and that's why the colors aren't quite correct. So what we want to do is pull down towards the greens and reducing a bit of the purples, which purples, if you don't know, are composed from red and, and blue. So by moving the tint towards the negatives, we're reducing a bit of the saturation on the red and the blue. So we're gonna pull it down until everything is even, just like that. And now we can see that our RGB parade is in a very similar level, indicating white balance. Now we can see before and after, let me just reduce this. This is our white balancing, our original white balancing straight out from camera. And now this is the final result and the image looks a lot more natural. We can see how it affects the skin tones and the background in general. The image looks a bit cool, but that's basically the nature of how it was shot. I have a a blue uh, wall back here, that's why it's so blue. So now we have an image that's correctly white balanced. Now remember, 
The key to this is to have the RGB parade and to have the three channels at the same level, indicating a balancing on the colors on our image. Okay, so now we're almost finished. We can see our image over here and it's looking quite nice. If we look at the original image, it was completely horrible. And considering where we started, it's looking quite nice actually. Now, this step, this final step will depend on your camera. It's correcting the skin tones. Maybe you're shooting in Canon and your image is looking perfect right now. But I'm shooting in Sony in a very old Sony camera and the skin tones aren't quite there. So if we zoom in over to the 50%, we can see that my skin tones are quite yellow and I look a bit sick. That's not my natural skin tone, guys. So I'm gonna correct this as the third step, the correction of the skin tones. Okay, now to correct the skin tones, what we want to do is activate the vector scope over here and deactivate the parade. Now, what is the vector scope? The vector scope is the graphical representation of the color on our image. So if we click here, we can see that we have this blur in the middle, this white blur indicating the colors that are in the image. So in the center is basically a desaturated uh, image for example if we pull down all the saturation we have that dot over here now if we see saturated once again we can see that our image contains a lot of blues and cyans over here and some reds and some yellows so basically it's representing the colors that we have on the image we have a lot of blues and cyans because of the background and my shirt and then we have some yellows and reds because of my skin now the line that we see over here this line this diagonal line is often referred as the skin tone line or the flesh line indicating that if our skin tones are in that line, it represents a correct color on our skin, our natural skin. So what we want to do is go all the way down to HCL secondary, and this tool, what it does, is allows us to select a certain gamma in our image and edit it independently. Now, I've already made a tutorial about this one. I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check it out, where I go into detail into how to use it. So for this case, we're just going to use it to correct the skin tones. Okay, so let's start off by selecting key over here. I'm gonna select the selector over here, the eyedropper tool, and just click on our skin. And then we're gonna activate the gray overlay. Now what we want to do is continue selecting all parts of our skin. In this case, I'm just gonna use the selector tools, which is quite simple. Just gonna select until I have the majority or the completion of my skin selected. And we just alter a bit of the luminance over here. You can also move the luminance, the saturation, and the hue sliders over here to be a bit more precise. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that selection. Now, I've selected only the skin tones, and as we can see in the uh, vector scope over here, the blues have disappeared because we're not selected them in any manner. We only have the skin tones selected and represented over here. Now, what I want to do, uh, just to see what we're working with, I'm just gonna add a lot more saturation to expand it a bit. Now, what we want to do is move this white mesh over here to the right, so it's more towards the reddish tones and just clipping a bit of the yellows. And that's for my skin tones in particular. So what I want to do is select over here, the correction, select the three circles over here, and now the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights appear, similar to the color grading part within Lightroom. Now to correct the tint on my skin, I'm gonna move the mid-tones towards the opposite of the greens. We want to pull them towards the magenta. So I'm gonna add a bit of magenta. As you can see, the vector scope starts shifting towards the right, more towards the reds. It's something like that. And as you can see, my skin, it's a bit exaggerated because I have a 190% of saturation, is a lot more natural in the skins. It's not yellow, so we click on and off. Now it's a bit more pink, a bit more magenta, more towards my natural skin tones. So now we've corrected the tint of our skin. We can also add a bit more of color, for example, for the shadows. I like to add a bit of red into the shadows of my skin. Now, if you're adding any color to the highlight, it will depend on the ambient lighting of the scene. For example, for this shot, I was illuminated with my light dome over here, which has a white cast. It doesn't have any saturation, so I wouldn't add any color to the highlight. But maybe if I'm shooting with candlelight, I would add some yellow light to compensate or to reflect that warmish tone that comes from the candle. And maybe if I'm outside in the shadows in a very sunny day with the blue sky over me, I would add some blue into the highlights. But in this case, I'm not gonna add anything. Now I'm gonna return the saturation all the way down. Just to add it a bit of saturation, just a bit. And as we can see, the skin tones are a lot more natural. We can click this button on and off of HCL secondary to see what we've done. And originally we had a very greenish cast on my skin. If we activate it, now we have a more vivid and more pink light tone to it. And yeah, we finished. This is how I correct S-Log or log footage or any flat picture profile. Normally I shoot in Cine 2. And this is how I correct it as well with these three steps. First of all, 
exposure and contrast. Then we correct the white balancing and finally we correct the skin tones. Now we click this button on off, we can see our results. This is the original image, very flat, very horrible. And now we have a very nice image as a result. Now you can save all these adjustments so you don't have to correct every single image if it's shot in the same manner. You can go up here in the Lumetri Color, select the menu over here, create or export cube, and you're gonna save your preset. So I'm gonna save my preset over here, I'm just gonna save it. And now if you want to apply it to different scenarios or to other images with the same picture profile, you can just use the basic corrections over here, input LUT, and you can apply your correction or utility LUT up here. Now it's not the same as applying a creative LUT. Creative LUTs go after the correction from S-Log. So for example, I have this video of my mom just in the morning, beautiful. And I'm gonna apply the correction LUT that we just created over here. I'm just gonna select over here. I'm gonna select it. And there we have it. Now our image is corrected into Rec 709, which is the standard of video, what we're accustomed to. This is the original. And now it's corrected. Again, I have this one in S-Log 2 once again. Just gonna apply the same preset. And now it's nicely saturated and nicely contrasted. The original and now this one. Now, once you've corrected your image, whether it be with a correction LUT like right now or doing it manually, you can go ahead and create your moody look, your, your personal or creative look on top of your correction and it's gonna work a lot better. So for example, over here, I have the correction LUT that we've just created and down here in creative, I'm gonna add my creative or personal look. So for example, if we scroll down, here we have my LUTs from my created LUT pack, link down below in case you wanna check it out. And for example, I'm just gonna apply maybe Baja and now we can see that the creative LUT or the color grading has been applied over our correction and it's looking actually fantastic. We can also go and maybe apply, let's say Memphis, which is a very, very contrasty one. Then we can also apply maybe Dolomite, which is a very natural look. It's quite beautiful, this one. So a pro tip guys, this is how LUTs or professional LUTs should work. First of all, you need to correct your image, whether it be manually correcting the exposure, the contrast, the white balancing and the skin tones or will it be with a correction LUT? And then you add your creative look or creative LUT, applying only edits to the color grading part. That's how professional LUTs should work. Because for example, let's say here we can see that if I add one of these that come by default in Premiere Pro, and we can see how the white balancing is completely off in most of them and the saturation and the contrast is quite horrible because these are very lousy or very cheap LUTs that we have over here by default. They're basically altering the white balance and altering the contrast and altering the skin tones. So it's not a very natural or very nice image. Uh, opposite to that, let's say we apply our basic correction and then we apply some of mine that only affect the color grading part. For example, let's apply uh, Dolomites. We have a very nice image with the skin tones remaining very natural and the white balancing being correct. So that's about it guys. That's my take or my three steps to always consistently correct log or flat picture profiles to have a very nice image. So if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It actually makes a difference and consider subscribing. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.